and this is Steve Sims and I am heading down to San Diego. I'm actually doing a speech in a couple of days time and to be honest with you, I'm utterly and utterly bored. So I'm actually going to jail next week and so I thought I'd phone up one of my buddies that's actually coming to jail with me and find out what he's hoping to get out of it. So calling him now and uh, we'll see what he says. Will he pick up? Florida and I'm on the west coast. There's a three hour difference. It's about uh, seven o'clock there, so he's probably already drunk. <laughs> How are you? You good? Mate, I don't even want is this is this child appropriate or no? Yeah, so what what I've done is I've actually uh, I'm heading down to San Diego at the moment doing a speech and I've got a GoPro that I'm playing with and I'm testing and I'm phoning up a few people and quite simply recording them um, while I'm driving down the road. But I wanted to talk to you about going to jail. I am I'm very fucking excited about going to jail. It'll be the first time that I'm going that I'm excited about it because all the other times <laughs> I didn't know when they were going to let me out. Yeah, exactly. Um, now, just to give some kind of background, next week, next Wednesday, the 24th of October, uh, myself and you, or you and myself, whatever, I don't know how you probably grammatically say it, but me and ye, um, and 24 other amazing entrepreneurs are heading to Kern uh, Maximum Security Jail, uh, north of uh, Los Angeles. Now, have you been to Kern before? Uh, to that prison or to Kern County? Uh, to the actual prison. I don't think you have, based on your prior statement, have you? <laughs> no, no, I haven't. I uh, I did a bunch of business with Kern County and Bakersfield, but I've never been to jail there. Right. It's uh, it's in the middle of nowhere. Actually, stinks of cows. Um, but the reason I wanted to ask you about it was I wanted to ask you two things. Um, why are you going, and what are you thinking? you're going to be coming out with? Uh, I'll answer the, the second question first because I'm asked backwards. I, I don't have any expectations other than to serve and uh, keep an open mind. I mean, I think about these guys and the predicament they're in, and at the end of the day, uh, you know, they're just humans that made, a, made bad decisions, and God knows I made my fair share a few, so... Uh, I'm, I'm just going in there with an open mind and very little expectation other than obviously the uh, the expectation to, 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 to serve them and learn something. Right, so that basically answers... We'll teach them, and, and, I, and I will say hopefully we'll teach them a thing or two about uh, entrepreneurship. Now the one thing that I noticed when I went in there that was quite uh, startling for me was um, a lot of them made a couple of mistakes that ended up being a gigantic mistake and it's the usual kind of like two percent or two degrees can put you a, a mile off real fast um yeah. what shook me to my core was in the situation they were maybe in the family they were in the background they were had it been us as they say for the grace of god go i we may have well been sitting on that other side of the line um, having done what they did. Um, so a lot of it is circumstance and environment that's actually propelled them into the situation, into the mistakes, which now has them serving some quite big sentences. Um, that was the big shock that I got out of it. Uh, now, you've known other people that have gone to these events, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, I have quite a few friends that have uh, gone through it, including yourself, and nothing but uh, incredible feedback and, you know, life-changing conversations and you know, just a shift in exactly what you just described. It's like these one one little decision or, or one little circumstance that, uh, you know, divides uh, us having freedom on a daily basis to them uh, being locked in solitary confinement in some cases. Yeah, now we're going up, we're going up next Wednesday. We've got about a two and a half hour trek just to give you the itinerary and anyone else hearing. We're kicking off at about 6.30 in the morning from an area called Sherman Oaks which is just uh, north of Los Angeles. It's gonna take us about two and a half hours to get there. Um, did you get the email regarding the dress code? I did, I did. I saw, um, I saw it come through from Claire and 
I, I'm actually going to be out there the week before at a free speaking event in San Francisco and LA and San Diego that I'm driving from San Diego that Monday morning uh, to have dinner with you guys. I think it's a Monday. Yeah, Monday. Or, what, yeah. what are we having dinner on Tuesday? We're doing a, yeah, on Tuesday night, uh, all of the entrepreneurs are getting together and we're having uh, drinks and food. And then the following day on the Wednesday, we actually go up to jail. So it's the Tuesday night is the actual drinks and dinner. Yeah, yeah, so I'm looking forward to that. I actually have a, my speaking gig in San Diego is on Monday evening, so I'll sleep in San Diego and then wake up and uh, have a surf and come your way. That'd be perfect. Yeah, I did know, I remember when I saw that dress code, it's uh, no jeans, no monotone, um, so you can't wear all blue, all black, all gray. Um, you can't wear orange, you know, who would but you know they were saying that the uh, the dress codes were quite strict and if you don't adhere to them if you turn up in denim uh, or anything like that then they, they can't let you in so it's um it's no joke up there it's no kidding these guys are walking around heavily armed protecting us and therefore we need to protect them by making sure we're easy to spot by adhering to the dress code I think the easiest way they said was to stick to black and white white shirt black trousers yeah. Um, or khakis and black shirt, but something that's very easy to stand out from the usual green, grey, blue, and orange. So don't wear the yeah, jumpsuit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, uh, I, I, unfortunately, I don't have one of those anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's good. It's good. You, you left out way behind. I'm really thrilled uh, that you're coming up. Uh, I'm going to post this uh, this little video uh, as we come up to the to the event. I'm going to be posting some pictures and maybe some little video context from the Tuesday as well uh, at the, uh, the the drinks and food, and it's going to be very it's very going to be very sobering to see what people's reactions are like as we actually come back uh, on the Wednesday in the bus. Yeah, yeah, I think we should uh, definitely shoot some video after the fact too, just to download. I mean, you've already gone through the experience, right? I, well, I've been through one of the experiences. This one's actually, this one's actually different, and I'm going to leave it at that. Um, this one that I'm going to is in the same facility, uh, different format. Um, so yes, I know what it's like going through the gate, but I'm never sure you can really either get used to walking through those gates at that level of security, or whether or not you ever want to. Um, so I, I'm also very. Uh, open-minded as to what I'm going to gain from that day. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm uh, excited to serve and learn and, you know, hopefully we can add some value for them and, it, you know, if anything, just give them some hope. I mean, talk to you guys are, I know some of them are in there for life, right? Yeah, there's some multiple lifers in there, but there's, there's people coming out, there's people coming up for parole and we're there to kind of hopefully give them a little bit of encouragement, but more than anything, talk to them as human beings. Uh, that's the thing that I found that most of them were most appreciative to. I was speaking to a guy that was serving like a, you know, another two life sentences, probably will never come out. But the fact that I had a conversation with him for the day, he was over the moon. So I think that's yeah, what well, it, it doesn't, helps. Doesn't mean, yeah, it does, doesn't mean that we, you can't instill hope in it. It's just because uh, you, you can have hope locked up or, or, uh, or being free. No, it's good. It's good. I'm actually proud that you're coming over, buddy. I'm thrilled that you've done this uh, one-sided video and this little uh, ad hoc uh, interview, but uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you next week. You too, mate. Be safe. I'll see you next week. All the best. Bye. Bye. That's it. It's Brian Scrone. It's going to be damn cool. See you soon. Bye.